the glory, honor, and the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Uh, it's just a little quick subject that I want to talk about. It's been on my heart I, uh, since this morning. And this is right here. It's for those who are married and those who are not married. It doesn't matter. The scripture will be coming from the book of Genesis. Uh, I like that song. Now, that's a song. I'm loving this song that is on. It's played and by Kurt Franklin. He loves me. <clears throat> good morning, good morning, good morning. I see Periscope tripping on me. <clears throat> but I'm going to continue on talking. Um, what is that, Arena? Good morning, Miss Johnson. Good morning, Arena. Good morning. Uh, <clears throat> Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you for the late night rest of the early morning rise. And Father God, I pray that the word goes forth, falls on good soil, that it may produce fruit a hundredfold. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. The scripture this morning is coming from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 18. And the scripture re reads Then the Lord said, and I'm reading out a New Living Translation. Then the Lord said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right. For him. <clears throat> so the Lord formed from the ground all the wild animals and all this stuff here. <clears throat> he brought them to the man and everything. Father God, yeah, they me in Jesus' name, amen. This scripture, if people is not careful, <clears throat> they will look over the wording of the scripture. Because many times look at the scripture and say, God created a helpmate for Adam. But he did not create a help mate because if he created a mate, uh, Eve would, would only thing he would be made and designed for was to mate, uh, to have babies. But he created a helper. He created a help mate. He did not take Eve from Adam's head to make him lord over her. He did not make take Eve from Adam's feet for him to trample over her. He took her from his side. That way they can walk side by side, hand in hand, and subduing the earth together. Uh, God established at least four purposes for marriages when he performed the first marriage in the Garden of Eden. Uh, Eden. First, he wants people to enjoy suitable companionship. Uh, second, marriage provides the God-given right to enjoy... <clears throat> Uh, the sex and to have children. He gave you that right when you marry. This doesn't imply that sexual love is only for procreation because many people marry who are bound, who are beyond the time of bearing children, but the bearing of children is an important part of marriage. A third purpose for marriage is to encourage self control. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 1 through 7 said it's better for to marry than to burn with lust. Finally, marriage is an illustration of the loving and intimate relationship between Christ and his church. Paul, Apostle Paul called this a great mystery that is a profound spiritual truth that was once hidden but is now revealed by the Spirit. Christ loved the church, cared for her, and seeks to cleanse her and make her more beautiful for his glory. <clears throat> uh, God knew what Adam needed. Uh, a helper who is just right for him. And just like today, God knows what we need. He knows that, like as the word says, it isn't fit for us to be alone. But he said, I will make somebody who's suitable for him. The reason why so many people get into marriages and relationships fail because they end up getting into a situation where it wasn't out of love. It was out of lust. And it don't last. They start warring against each other because they really be unequally yoked. 
the the woman was by his right there, right from Adam's side. You know, they motivated uh, one another. They encouraged one another as they go. Where he was weak, she was strong. Where she was strong, he was weak. <laughs> they complimented one another. You know, as a man, a man supposed to compliment his wife, his woman, and the woman compliments her husband. Uh, they laugh together. They cry together. You know, they build each other up. And that's what it's about. Uh, sometimes you, we live in a time right now where so many people get into relationships. And the relationships become abusive. Because once a man put his hands on you, he has no respect for you. And nine times out of ten, because he put his hand on you, when a man put his hand on a woman, nine times out of ten, he saw his somebody in his family do that. Nine times out of ten, it probably was his dad. Or the relationship that his mother was in and out of. And he watched how they abused the mama. So he grows up and do the same thing. Uh, sometimes, you know, it falls the other direction. Where he does everything possible not to abuse the woman. One of the most frequently misunderstood terms in the Bible is the term help me in the book of Genesis. Uh, the common way in which the term help me is interpreted is to mean that Eve, unlike the other uh, beasts of the earth, was appropriate for or worthy of Adam and was to be his helper or companion on the earth. While there are some really good things about this interpretation, it doesn't do full justice to what the term help me really means. The term in its original Hebrew means something much more profound and powerful than just a helper. And when we understand that what God was saying to Adam, we come to see Eve's role and the role of women on this earth in a much different light. In the Hebrew, the two words that help me are derived from are the words Ezer and the word Keindigo. Ezer, which is commonly translated as help, is really a rich word which, uh, with a much deeper meaning. Uh, according to uh, the biblical scholar David Freeman, the Hebrew word translated then to English as help is Ezer. This word is a combination of two root words, one meaning to rescue, uh, to save, and the other meaning to be strong. Just as the roots merged into one word, so did their meanings. And at first, Ezer meant either to save or to be strong. But in time, said Freeman, Ezer was always interpreted as to help a mixture of both nuances. Um, I'm going to quote uh, Diana Webb. Uh, Diana Webb, in her book, for, uh, Forget for Forgotten Women of God, uh, also clarified this word by meaning. The noun Ezer occurs 21 times in the Hebrew Bible. In eight of these instances, the word means Savior. These examples are easy to identify because they are associated with other expressions of deliverance or saving. Elsewhere in the Bible, the root Ezer means strength. The word is most frequently used to describe how God is in Ezer to man. A help me. Strength. To be strong. To rescue. When God created Eve, I mean Eve for Adam, he created uh, some strength. He created somebody who's going to rescue him. For example, the word Ebenezer in 1 Samuel 7 and 12 is used to describe the power of God's deliverance. Eben means rock and Ezer means help or salvation. Ebenezer therefore means rock of help or rock of salvation. The root Ezer is the same word that God used to describe to Adam who Eve was. She was not intended to be just as just his helper. Eve was not intended to just be Adam's helper or his companion. Rather, she was intended to be his savior and his deliverer. That's some good stuff right there. The other part of the term help me, which is commonly translated as meet for or fit for, is the word K-Indigo. 
It is hard to know exactly what the word Kenegal means because it only appears once in the entire Bible. Negag, a related word which means against, I'm just teaching right now, was one of the first word uh, you know, uh, Hebrew words. Uh, it's a strange word, but uh, when you get to it, he was not designed to be exactly like Adam. She was designed to be his mirror opposite. Is anybody out there, y'all listening? Y'all listen, I don't see, you know, I, yeah, let me know if y'all out there. I don't, all right, praise the Lord. Y'all out there. Okay, all right, I see some purple hearts out there. Eve was not designed to be exactly like Adam. She was designed to be his mirror opposite. P uh, possessing the other half of the qualities, responsibilities, and attributes which he lacked. That's some good stuff right there. Just like Adam and Eve's sexual organs were physically mirror, mirror opposites, one being internal, the other external, so were their divine stewardship designed to be opposite but fit together perfectly to create life. Eve was Adam's complete spiritual equal, endowed with an essential saving power that was opposite from his. That's some good stuff right there. That's some good stuff right there. So, Women are like saviors to men by the fact that they give them life and nurture them towards the light of Christ. Oh, I, I hope I'm helping somebody today. Hope I'm helping somebody today. By conceiving, creating, and bearing mortal bodies, women make it possible for God's children to start on their mortal journey and have the opportunity to become perfect. Without women, there would be no gateway into this world and no opportunity for progress or exaltation. In addition, by being willing to sacrifice their very lives, if necessary, to bring children into this world, women demonstrate the true meaning of charity, of love. From the very first breath a child takes, he or she has been the recipient of charity, of love, and unconditional love. This is a powerful gift. That a mother gives her child and it is her love which first reminds a child of God and points them towards Christ. Each woman, regardless of her ability to give birth, is a savior to mankind when she loves men and nurtures her child closer to Christ. Y'all listening, my women? Y'all listening? Even, even Adam, even Adam, whose physical body was not created by, the, by a daughter of Eve, was saved and delivered by a woman. For it was through a woman, Mary, that Jesus Christ came to conquer the bonds of death and sin and atone for Adam's transgression. Mm -mm -mm. Without a woman to bear the body of Christ, mankind would have been lost and fallen forever, and Adam's work and purpose on the earth would have been meaningless. Mary was the gateway that made Christ's work possible and her nurturing the catalyst for his success. This I'm reading from my notes right now. I, uh, this came from Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. I'm reading in my notes right now. So even though Eve didn't give physical, physical life to Adam. She literally saved him from spiritual death. By opening up the way for the savior. For the redeemer Jesus Christ. To come into the world. Salvation in the form of Christ. Literally came to earth. Through Eve, through the woman. Oh, that's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. Let me tell you something. I have a lot of these notes here. Uh, because this perspective of Eve, for me, uh, is, is powerful. It is so different from what we normally hear about her and about women's role in the world. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing because... You got you got to be mindful of what's transpiring in the world right now of women because a lot of women are not uh, how can I say this recognized or uh, appreciated for the gift that they bring into the world. Even in churches, you'll see the dominant roles of the men uh, when 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 you have the uh, the man 
uh, a lot of women are being raised right now, but a lot of churches, they don't really have a lot of women playing in dominant roles. They've been set down and not to speak. But God, this is a season, this is a time where God is raising up daughters. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's a conference coming up, SWIM conference. Uh, SWIM, Sisters Winning in Ministry, that my bishop, R.C. Blakes, is, is coming up in July. Sisters Winning in Ministry that uh, for, for, for a lot of women who have that gift, but at the same time, they're sitting underneath a so-called spiritual covering of uh, somebody who's supposed to be their spiritual father, but at the same time not recognizing them and the gift that they have. So, since 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 the uh, this is happening, God is raising up uh, 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 some women. He's raising up some women to take on a lot of powerful positions. You know, because because the positions a lot of men are rejecting them. You know, so. So you have to be real mindful. So uh, I don't know if I got off the subject, but when God created Eve, he created a help, a helper, a helper to help Adam. Let me tell you something. As men, men love to be nurtured because they can't get that from no man. I'm sorry. No homo, but he can't get that from no man. He needs. He need that from a woman. He need a woman to, you know, to say, come on, baby, it's going to be all right. You know, the stroke, you know, the stroke is, you know, his ego, just a pat him on the back and everything. This whole, you know, him close. You know, every man desires that. And when you know when you have that right person, you understand? Because a lot of people get into relationships where the relationship be it ends up in pure hell because so many people are settling. We're living in a time where men and women are settling for somebody because they're infatuated with the idea of getting married. Little, little, what, little girls are, 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 are nurtured up in getting the Barbie dolls. And I don't know if they play with Barbie dolls anymore. When I was coming there, giving the Barbie doll with the Ken and all this stuff here. I don't even know if Barbie and Ken was married, but they had a house. I ain't never see Barbie back there with no wedding gown and all this. But anyway, you we, we it's, it is time. You know, men and women are settling. Don't settle for less. You know, as God continues to shape and mold you into the mighty man and woman of valor that you are calling be, have been predestined to be, even before the foundations of the world, he is doing the same thing for that helper. Who is coming along the way. You know. Yeah I've never seen a ring on no Barbie finger. They was living. They was. I, Barbie was fornicating. They was living. They was. They was, they was living in sin. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But. You know. But I'm saying. Don't settle. Don't settle. How you know when you have the right one. And it's coming along. Because that right one. Let me tell you something. Uh, my bishop said this before. What, by the time a man is, is like 30 years old, he know what it is that he wants. All the place should be out of him at 30 years old. And he ain't got to wait no two, three years to get married. You don't want to take that long. He know what you want, so when he get it. Oh man, bone of my bone flesh. Because she going to make something leap up in him. She going to make the baby leap up in him. You understand? Especially don't love God for being 50 years old. You know, so... If when you see a man when he's so old and but he's still playing games, still playing games, ain't got, we don't have time for no games. Life is too short. Life life is too short to play games. This is what the manhood academy was all about, and it still is about because it's gonna go further. That you know, men are not born; men are made. And you have to be shaped and molded into be a man. You know, we have, I didn't become a man until I made 25 years old. When I recognized who I was, I identified myself with Christ. 
When I was in the street, I was bald to your fall, clothes, clothes, women, and jewelry. I wasn't worrying about no, you know, I'm gone from this house to that house. Thank praise the Lord, I ain't catch no diseases. God spared my life, Lord knows. I was, praise the Lord, you know, I was a young man with money. Shoot, that money I had gold teeth all in my mouth. I had about six gold teeth all in my mouth. I was going from house to house. I had my clothes everywhere, all over the city in New Orleans. You know, praise the Lord. Thank God I ain't, I ain't, I ain't contracting no, 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 uh, no diseases, no nothing, no STD, no nothing. Shucks. But when a man, when you come to, you said when I was a child, I thought as a child, understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. A, a real man gonna put away. He said, be ye perfect for your father in heaven is perfect. That word perfect in the Greek means to mature. You know, that's right. Men only do what women allow them to do. I sound like my bishop talking about <laughs> talking about the women. Uh, you know, <coughs> praise the Lord. Because let me tell you something. I know what I once was. I know what I once was. I was trying to get every, chasing every skirt. Every skirt I can get a hold to. Lord no shoe. Young man come along with nice cars. I'm talking whatever I wanted. Lexus and BMWs and all that stuff. They're out know, 20 years old. You know, shoe with, with jewelry everywhere. Who, what woman wouldn't want no, no young man like that? And I was and I was running on air, yeah, baby. You know, I love you, girl. You know I love you. <laughs> get me, get out of here with that foolishness. You know, when I, when, I, when I think back at all of that, I'm like, Lord, I was a mess. I was a hot mess. You understand? But praise the Lord. Thank God for his grace, you know, uh, and his mercy. You know, so, <clears throat> so it's, 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 it's all good. It's all good. Now, so when I was a child, I thought as a child. I'm 40 years old now. You know, so, you know, it is what it is. So don't settle. Women don't settle. Men don't settle. You know what you want. That's why they have all these social these these dating sites and everything. You can go, you can basically go on these dating sites and create you a man or woman. I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <clears throat> I remember in 2007 when I came home for jail, I was on blackpeoplemeet.com. I was a, I was still a hot man. I was saved. I was saved. But at the same time, I just did 10 years in the penitentiary. So I was, hey, you understand? I was on blackpeoplemeet.com. I was meeting women from all over the place. Praise the Lord. But then I had to come to understand and say, Lord, look, <laughs> I need your help. You know, I had a profile and I was, shoo. I was, I, you know, hit the interstate and drive to, to Texas and Atlanta or whatever. I was single. You know, so, hey, praise the Lord. Anyway, but uh, it's all good. I thank God. God is able. So, now I'm at the point in my life where a lot of women, I don't know why, but a lot of women, they, they come to me and they, and they talk. They ask me, they ask questions and, and everything, I, you know. So, and I'm just, I'm just fearful. I'm okay, I can explain to you. Yeah, the way they dress. I'm like, baby, you ain't gonna do nothing but attract flies the way you dress. You think Eve walked around in the garden, you know, looking a hot mess? You know, she was looking like peaches and cream. <laughs> Shucks. <coughs> but let me tell you something. God is able. I had a whole lot on that study that I was doing. Uh, with uh, Dealing with the uh, help me. Uh... I just finished one class. I was up to 12 o'clock last night. I was up to 12 o'clock because I was writing a paper on the titles and the name of Jesus. And that was in my systematic theology class, but another class, systematic theology, part two star. So I was up all night and I'm like, Lord Jesus, I didn't want to get up this morning. And I have systematic theology. Then I got, uh, I have three more classes after this systematic theology too. I have three more classes left. So, uh, I should, I'll be finished in December and, you know, walk across the stage whenever that's going to be and get my master's of arts in Christian education. Uh, so God is able, but as tired as I am, I'm like, everybody not built for it. 
I get up early in the morning, go to sleep late, late at night. You know, so I keep on keeping on. Like I talked this morning, I said I keep on pressing. You know, regardless of the fact, some people can. I'm out of 168 hours in a week's time. I might get about 30 to 35 hours of sleep a week. But am I tired? You know, I get tired, but I don't get tired because I'm sleep. Uh, you know, I'm like sleeping tired. You know, because I know where I came from and I got to keep on pressing. I have my goals set. And I'm the type of person, once my goal is set, I'm going to get it. I don't have time to be sleeping. I'm going to sleep when I'm dead. So, I thank God for you all this morning. Um, this was a beautiful scope right here. I I'm going to have to just talk about that more. You know, because it ain't always, you know, I talk about the Bible. But I have so much that I other things I can talk about. I can talk about this life, period. Uh, I can talk about relationship because I've been in relationships. I can talk about marriage because I'm married. And guess what? Even when you're married, uh, my business say when the reason why the adversary been applying so much pressure to me because there's a mandate on my life. When you have a higher calling on your life, the adversary will come even stronger and harder, and he will come in and step in your marriage. Let me tell you something. It's not easy. But, you know, you have to endure. You have to keep continue to press and continue to pray. Y'all pray for me. You understand? Pray for me. Lift me up in prayer because I need all the prayer I can get in the mighty name of Jesus. So I just thank y'all uh, for listening. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful day. Oh, I'm out of breath now. Oh, I'm going to listen to that right there. Yeah, it's mandated. So... Again, I thank God for you all. It's a beautiful day. I have my three kids up in here. I'm about to go get them in the training. Y'all have a blessed day. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray for each and every last person who is on here, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. As you created uh, a helper for Adam, Father God, I pray for those who don't have that helper in their lives, Father God, I pray for increased favor and overflow, the reign of uh, rule and abide within them. In Jesus' name, Father God. <clears throat> Father God, I lift each and every last person up and strengthen them in the weak areas. Build them up in the areas where there's so much torn down. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, because we know that you're able to do more exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or imagine. <clears throat> as your word says, as long as we delight ourselves in you, you give us the desires of our heart. So we're holding you to your word, Lord God. And Father God, in Jesus' name. Prepare your sons and your daughters for the helper that you have prepared for them. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for that, I give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I thank God for you all. I got to go get some water. Oh. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I think when I was coughing at my house, I, I had to change... I had to change the uh, air condition, the little filter, because I was coughing when I got to my house. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. I had to change them at the shop and at the house. I got to assign somebody to keep that done. I have a 20 year old and an 18 year old at the house, and I, I don't know what to do. I'm about to put them out, praise the Lord. They ain't good for nothing. I don't know what to do. I'm going to put them out <clears throat> to get them a job. But praise the Lord. Thank God for y'all. Y'all have a blessed day. <laughs> yeah, they can stay there longer than in school. The minute they drop out of school, they got to go. <clears throat> longer than in school, they can stay. I ain't charging nothing. Pay your own cell phone bill. But the minute they drop out of school, they got to get up out of my house. That's it. Praise the Lord. Increase favor and overflow. Y'all have a blessed day. <clears throat>